Hey guys, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, we're going to be doing the third episode of Ask Saki, where you guys submit questions to me, and I answer them for you. So yesterday night, before I went to sleep, I, I made a post on the community tab of uh, YouTube, and I asked you guys to submit some questions. And of course, uh, as of now, uh, we have 295 questions, and now I can actually pick some of these questions and answer your questions. So let's dive right in. So let's uh, take a look over here. The first um, uh, question comes from Mr. Beaner, and he's asking, uh, does the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 get slow over time? And the uh, answer to that question is a no. Uh, in fact, I'll let you know that I did not have this slowdown problem even on the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. With the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, uh, I've been using this smartphone as my dedicated driver, I did it for two months total, and uh, in that period of timeline, and I'm a heavy power user, I did not experience any kind of slowdowns on the Note 9, nor did I uh, experience any kind of lag. Uh, the same can be said for the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, the S9, and the S9 Plus, and even the S8 and the S8 Plus. I was having some problems with the S7s and S6 back in the days, uh, but ever since the S8, this slowdown problem has been really been fixed. Uh, especially with the Note 9 and the Note 8, you get 6 gigs or 8 gigs of RAM uh, based on which model you buy. And with the more RAM, it's really hard for the, for the phone to slow down because basically everything can be handled by that large amount of RAM. And of course, there's continual software enhancements. Uh, but yes, so basically to answer that question, no, I did not experience any slowdowns on the Note 9 for the two months that I've used it so far. And the reason I used it only for two months is because I also had to use other phones for testing purposes, and that's when I have to put down the Note 9 and look at the other phones, and that's when I'm not using the Note 9, okay? So let's uh, move on to the next question. Somebody over here wants to know the specifications of the Samsung Galaxy S10 and the Note 10. Now, normally when I make rumor and leaks videos, they're based on leaks and rumors from reliable leaksters. So without that information, I can't really tell you what the specs are going to be. Uh, but I can give you a slight uh, idea of what to expect. Uh, with the Samsung Galaxy S10, there's a couple rumors, rumors that were released a while ago that are still probably uh, being floating around. So what they were saying was uh, with the S10, and remember everything that applies to S10 trickles down to the Note 10. Okay, so whatever you get on the S10, you will get on the Note 10. So let's talk about the S10 for a second. One thing I know with the Note 10 is that um, they are working on an in-display fingerprint sensor that's going to be on the front of the screen right here somewhere, okay? Uh, it's going to be somewhere over here. So that's going to be great. But the other thing is also with the S10, a rumor that I uh, uh, heard, and it's also based on some facts, is that the display of the S10 is going to have integrated speakers. So, so, so the display itself is able to give you sound. So you're going to have more space uh, where normally they put the stereo speakers now. So the stereo speakers now on these smartphones are either at the bottom, uh, one of them is at the bottom, and the other one is on the top next to the earpiece. Uh, but when they are able to integrate the speakers inside the display, not only are you going to have front firing speakers, you're also going to get an all screen display that's going to stretch even further. So with the in display fingerprint sensor and uh, extra space free for the stereo speakers, uh, the display is just going to stretch even more. And I'm assuming with the S10, we're going to get a real, uh, true, full screen experience without an actual notch to mess things up. And then of course, it's almost a given that you are going to get all the standard flagship features, wireless charging, fast wireless charging, fast wired charging. Uh, you're going to be getting IP68 or even greater water resistance capacity. Uh, you will get something like the iris scanner. We'll see what they do with that. I mean, if they put a fingerprint sensor on the front of the display, I don't need a face ID or an iris scanner. I prefer a fingerprint sensor on the front of the screen beyond anything else, okay? It's great to have face ID. It's great to have iris scanners. Uh, they do work. 
uh, but nothing beats having a fingerprint sensor. It's much more intuitive. It's much more natural. It's actually a little bit cooler, to be honest. I am highly anticipating that the S10 is gonna have eight gigabytes of RAM, standard, okay? If not, it's gonna be six. Minimum is gonna be six, maximum is gonna be eight. And of course, uh, the processor is gonna be the next Snapdragon processor. Right now we have the 845, so next year we'll see what name they give it. It might be the 855. So we've got to, we're gonna have the best processor, eight gigs of RAM, a full screen display, in-display fingerprint sensor, um, stereo speakers that actually give you sound via the display, and of course, an overall sexier design. That's what I anticipate with the S10. Now, I've made a video before where I said the S10 is gonna crush basically every other phone on the market if these things are true. Other people have tried in-display fingerprint sensors. Uh, they have tried face IDs with notches. Nothing seems like a complete product. I wanna see a, a, a final product that is gonna work flawlessly and that might be the Samsung Galaxy S10. And of course, if they, uh, all these features are gonna, are gonna trickle over to the Note 10, if there's a Note 10 next year. So that was one question. So let's move on to the next question. Uh, over here, uh, somebody's asking, will YouTube ever adjust the 18 to nine phone ratios? So instead of zooming in and losing top and bottom video content, at least offer a stretch option. Now that's something without a fact, without facts, I cannot say for sure. Now, as, as he mentioned, we do have zooming options. So we can actually go like this on the screen and that's gonna zoom the video to fill the entire screen. But then again, you're losing the top, bottom and corner content on the video. So this, this, this uh, question, I don't have an answer to yet, but that's actually a very good uh, thing to mention because when you go to your high definition TVs, uh, all high definition TVs do have a stretch option. So if I'm watching a movie on my high definition, high definition TV and there's a, there's a video that was recorded in a different aspect ratio than a widescreen, I can tap a couple options, uh, click on stretch, and the whole thing gets stretched into the display. The same thing happens with the software that you have on your computers. VLC player can do that and other uh, media players can do that. So it would be nice to see these options, these stretching to fill the display options in the smartphones, uh, just an option to have, okay? I've got no problem with extra options on your smartphones. The next question uh, comes from King Michael. Uh, he's asking, what is the best screen resolution to select for my, for my Note 9? So again, for those of you guys who do not know, with the Note 9, as a matter of fact, with any Galaxy smartphone, uh, you can change the resolution of the actual screen, and you have three options. Uh, let me read them right now from my actual phone. So you have the option to go, let's see, screen resolution. You can go HD+, you can go full HD+, and you can go uh, WQHD+. And of course, the HD+, is 1480 by 720. Uh, the FHD Plus is 2220 by 1080, and the WQHD Plus is 2960 by 1440. I recommend FHD Plus, and the reason I recommend this is because not only does the phone still look amazingly sharp, it also saves you some battery because there's going to be less pixels to push, so you're going to have slightly longer battery life, maybe 30 minutes extra, maybe one hour extra based on how long you use your phone. But um, if you want the maximum resolution, uh, you can go to the WQHD Plus, but I recommend, as a matter of fact, my own phone is at the middle, right over here, at full HD Plus, ever since I bought the device and I've been using it this way, I haven't seen any kind of uh, degradation in quality, okay? And of course, if you do go to the high resolution, it's gonna be a slightly sharper, slightly crisper. You may even notice it if you have great eyes, uh, but it's not a big deal and it's gonna eat a little bit extra battery life. Then again, the Note 9 does have a large battery. It's lasted me all day, no problem. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually test. I'm gonna, right now I'm gonna go to the highest definition. I'm gonna click done and I'm gonna start to test my phone with the highest resolution and see if it, if it lasts full day, okay? Uh, with the full HD+, Plus, the medium option, it's fine. It lasts all day and even there's some leftover. So 
that's what I recommend, but I'm gonna test the highest resolution and maybe give you an update later. Okay, so another question here, should I upgrade to the Note 9 or wait for the S10? Uh, now you're asking me if you wanna upgrade to the Note 9. Okay, so th that's the main question. Should I upgrade to the Note 9 or wait for the S10? So you have interest in the Note series. So if you're gonna wait for the S10, I would actually tell you to wait for the Note 10, okay? Because like I said, uh, if you do have, uh, uh, the, the Note 10 is gonna have everything that the S10 is gonna have, plus the S Pen and a couple more enhancements that you get uh, with, the, with the Note series, okay? Such as camera improvements. So you can upgrade to the Note 9 right now. Note 9 is a perfect product, okay? It's, it's a beautiful smartphone. Uh, it's, it's probably the best smartphone on the market right now. Uh, but if you're gonna wait for the S10, I'm just gonna tell you because you're already showing interest in the Note 9. Some people don't show interest in the Note series. For them, the S products are fine. Uh, but in your case, you have interest in a Note 9. So if you are gonna wait for the S10, just wait for the actual Note 10, okay? And of course, currently you're using the Note 8. That's the other uh, part, of your, part of the question that you have. So if you're using a Note 8 right now, you must be interested in the S Pen. I'm not sure if you use it all the time like I do. Uh, maybe you just like to have it there. Maybe you actually use it. But if you have it once, you don't want to get rid of it. So yes, wait for the S10. I mean, wait, wait for the Note 10, okay? If you upgrade from the Note 8 to the Note 9, you're not going to get a massive upgrade. It's a minor upgrade. But with the Note 10, if you get a full screen display, an in-display fingerprint sensor, as well as better stereo speakers and higher specs, uh, uh, two years more in specs over the Note 8, you're gonna be better off with the Note, uh, Note 10, okay? Okay, so the next question comes from Tony. Uh, he's asking, what's the best way to back up and, you, and you restore your Note 9? So basically, all you wanna do is go to your phone, uh, go to the settings, okay? And then scroll down to Cloud and Accounts, and under there, you're gonna see a backup and restore option. You tap on that and you have all these backup and restoration options. Now, basically what happens is every Samsung owner gets access to Samsung Cloud. So if you open a Samsung account, you have access to Samsung Cloud with your device. It gives you 15 gigabytes of free space. Into that space, you can simply just, it says backup data over here. You can tap on this and it's gonna back up your entire phone to uh, Samsung Cloud, okay? And you can choose what you want to back up. You can back up your phone, messages, contacts, uh, calendars, clock, settings, the home screen, layout, uh, all the applications, documents, basically everything, okay? So there's a full list. Just go to that setting that I just told you about. Uh, go to Cloud and Accounts, okay? And then tap on Backup and Restore and just Backup Data. And then uh, if you reset your phone, you can go back into that setting, log into your Samsung account from the setting, and then restore your data. So that's great uh, option to have. And that was the final question I'm gonna take here. There's uh, 290 questions here. I cannot go over them all. It's, it would take forever. But these were the questions that got more most likes, so that's why I picked them. All right, guys, so if you do have any other comments, questions, concerns, drop them down in this video, and uh, either me or somebody will take a look at it. And of course, thank you for being a subscriber. And if you are not a subscriber, subscribe right now. And uh, I will see you in the next video. And hopefully in a couple uh, weeks, we'll do another Ask Saki video. All right, guys, uh, have a fantastic day.